Do you know what really separate editors who make simple $100 from those who make $500? It's not the gear, it's not the computer, and it's not even the software. It's the precision, the small details that make everything feel designed, clean, and super intentional. And one of the most important things is text, because professional text isn't just words on the screen. It's color choice, the right font, depth, composition, space, all working together to create text that feels like part of the design, not just an add-on. And once you start diving into text, you realize how easy to get lost. Colors, shadow, weights, motion, it gets complex fast. So in this video, I'm breaking everything down in a simple and clear way. In this tutorial, we will dive into three parts. In part 1, we will learn the essential animation tools in After Effects, how to turn them into a reusable effect for any text, and a smooth professional bounce animation that brings text into life in seconds. Then, in part 2, we will learn the handwriting style animation, creative and dynamic. And in the last part, 3, we will learn a more advanced Amazon style animation with layers, depth and sharp motion, the type of animation you add to your portfolio to attract a big clients. You can skip to part 2 and 3 if you want, but I strongly recommend watching part 1 as well. It teaches text techniques that make everything look clean, precise and high level. By the end of this video, you will finally understand the world of text animation, and you will know exactly what it takes to master it. All project files and assets are available in the video description. I recommend pausing the video, grabbing a coffee, getting comfortable, because this video is going to be insane. With that being said, let's dive into the first part. Okay, start by adding a text box, and I want you to type animate text in the center of the screen. Center the anchor point, scale it up so it's easy to see, and open the settings. You will see an option called animate. You basically use it to create most text animations. Click on it. As you can see, we have a few parameters here. I will go over the most important parameters with you now. Start by choosing position. Play with the position we had. For example, move the text up and to the left, and nothing happens. So open the range selector, add the start keyframe, move forward a bit, and set the start to 100%. Grab the keyframes, go into the graph, create an easy and add a motion blur to the layer. And this is what it gave us. Right now it's an animation, but it's not clear yet. Now go into advance, and under mode, change it to words. This makes the animation affects only the words, not the letters. Under Add, choose Property, and then Scale. Click Add again, choose Rotation, click Add one more time, and add Opacity. In the settings, set the rotation to minus 40, and lower the scale and the opacity to 0%, and now it already looks much better. Some things start to come together here, and to make it even better, click Add again, and add Tracking. To show you how it works, I copy and delete the previous parameters. Lower the tracking amount to around minus 50, and they make the text look like this. Now I'll restore the previous parameters, and this is how everything looks together. It already looks very good, we just need last one touch and it's perfect. Go up and click Animator, and under Fill Color, choose RGB. That creates a second animator. In the settings, change the fill color to blue, go to the start of the comp, and in the range sector of the second animator, create a start keyframe. Move to the previous last keyframes, and set the start to 100%. That gives us something like this. This is nice, but you can make something even better. At the beginning of the layer, create start and end keyframes, and make sure both are at 0%. Move to the last keyframe, and set both to 100%. Grab the end keyframes, and push them slightly forward. And now it looks perfect. I want to show you how you can save it as a preset on your computer, and use it again. Click the text we just created, go to animation, and choose save animator preset. Finally, click a folder, and save it. In effects and presets, under animation presets, open any folder where you want the effect to be saved, select one of the existing presets, and click reveal in folder. And this will open the panel where all the effects are. Go to the location where you saved your effect, and drag it into the folder. Restart After Effects, and the preset will be show up. Now you can just drop it into any text, and it works. Simply amazing. Now let's move on to the bounce text animation. In a new comp, add a text and type bounce text. Center the anchor point, and scale it up so it's easier to work with. Duplicate the layer, this will use as a template. We want to separate the layer so each letter has its own layer. Copy the sentence except the first letter, and delete the rest. Duplicate the layer, paste the text, and move it to the right. Use the template as a guide. Copy the sentence again, remove the first letter, duplicate the layer, paste, and move it to the right. Repeat this process until every letter sits about its template, each one on its own layer. When it's done, delete the bottom layer that uses the template. Select all the layers and center the ranker points. Go to frame 5 and create scale, position, rotation, and opacity keyframes. Move back to the start of the layer, move the text down and to the right, scale it down to 100%, set the rotation to 60 degrees, and lower the opacity to 0%. We use the Bouncer tool, which is free and linked in the video description. Select all the layers, switch the property to Position, and click Bounce it. Now add Bounce to the scale and the rotation as well. The Bounce tool, add the Bounce expression to whatever parameters you choose. Add Motion Blur to all the layers, and wow, it already looks good. But you can take it even further. Now go to the last keyframes, add the Tint effect to the layer, change the Map White tool to Red Blue, and create a Mountain keyframe. Move 3 frames forward, and set it to 0%. Copy the Tint effect, Go back to the previous keyframes, 
select the rest of the layers and paste the tint. This looks nice, but not perfect. So add a one frame offset between each layer. And that's what it gives us. Simply amazing. And that's the first part done. Now let's move on to the second part. In a new comp, type art using the car star free font, which of course I will add in the video description. Center the anchor point and scale the text up to 600%. With the pen tool, set to non fill and the pink stroke of 5 pixels. Trace over the text. I recommend you follow the same path I taking, it should match the shape, but it doesn't need to be perfect. When you are done, open the layer settings, go to add and choose trim path. Go to the start of the layer, set 10 to 0% and create start and end keyframes. Move forward 5 seconds and set both to 100%. Pull the end keyframe 3 frames back and move the start keyframe 3 frames forward. This gives it a look like this. Under stroke, change line cap to round cap. Under taper, increase the start length to 45, which gives the stroke the sharp tail at the end. Recompose the shape layer. Right click again. And this time, under time, choose enable time ramping. That creates a default keyframes. At 0.5 seconds, add another keyframe. Move to about here, add one more keyframe, then grab that keyframe and the last one, and move them closer together. The spacing between them get closer, which affects the speed. Move a bit forward, add a keyframe, move a bit more, add another one, then grab those two, and tie them again. Finally, move the last keyframe to 3 seconds. This gives us something like this. See how the timing works? Using the pen tool with a 13 pixel stroke, Trace the letter A, this time follow the white parts exactly, and don't go outside the edges. Create the line as a new shape inside the same shape layer. Open the settings, under shape 1 and then stroke, change the line cap to round cap. Do the same under the stroke of shape 2, switch it to round cap as well. Lower the visibility. Create a new shape layer for the R, draw a shape that fits the letter, and change the line cap to round cap. Lower the visibility for this layer too. Create another new shape layer for the T. Draw the stroke of the T as a second shape inside the layer, just like you did with the letter A. Open both shapes and switch the line cap to round cap. Lower the visibility and bring the visibility of the first layer back. Move the purple stroke comp above everything. In the first shape layer, click Add, Trim Path. In the settings, change three multiple shapes to individual. Set 10 to 0% and at the start of the layer create an add keyframe. Move forward to the moment where the purple line reached the end of the first white section and raise the end to fill that part. Move forward again when the purple line reached the next section and raise the end slightly to match it. Then move to the moment when the purple line finished the letter and set the end to 100%. Go to the next layer and add another trim path. We do the same thing as we did with the first layer. Move to the moment where the purple line first started the layer, bring the visibility back up, set the end to 0% and create an add keyframe. Move forward to the moment the purple line reached the end of the layer and raise the end 100%. For the last layer, add trim path and bring the visibility back up. Change trim multiply shape to individual. Go to the spot where the purple line touched the start of the letter, set the end to 0% and create an add keyframe. Move to the moment it finishes that part and increase the end to reach that point. Move to where the purple line touched the next section of the letter and raise the end a bit more. Then move to the moment the purple line reached the end of the letter and set the end 100%. This gives us something like this. Now duplicate the layer 3 times and use the trackmate to connect each one to its matching outline layer. And here's how it looks. And that's it, we're almost at the end of this animation. Open the comp with the purple line and change the stroke to gradient. I use these colors. You can pick the colors that suit you. Add a glow effect to the comp and raise the radius to 40. And that warps it up. It just looks amazing, now let's move on to the last animation. Don't forget to like, subscribe so you don't miss the next animation and tips. In a new comp, double click on the shape tool. This creates a shape layer that fills the whole screen. Use the shape tool again to draw a mask in the center of the screen, about this size. Center the anchor point, make the layer 3D and duplicate it. Now let's start creating the box. Find the active camera button and switch it to custom view 1. Move around in the 3D space until you find an angle where the rectangle looks like this. Move the anchor point to the right side. In rotation, raise the rotation Y to 90 degrees. This creates the second side of the cube. Duplicate the layer again and using the Y position, move it to the opposite side so it lines perfectly. Move the anchor point to the right side as well. Duplicate the layer again and set the rotation back to 0 degrees. Duplicate it one more time and move the anchor point downward. Now switch to the bottom view of the cube. Set the rotation X to 270 so it matches the bottom side of the cube. Open the mask and stretch it all the way out so it fully covers the bottom. That completes the base of the cube. Now let's add the lid. Duplicate the first cube layer and change its label color to yellow. We marked all the lid layer in yellow for organized. Move the anchor point upward and rotate the X rotation of the lid so it looks like it's opening. Around 60 degrees. Do the same for the other three sides of the box. Duplicate each one. Move the anchor point upward and rotate the X rotation so it's open about 60 degrees. 
When you're done, we will want to style the box, select the first layer, go to fill, and change it to linear gradient. Set the colors to orange on the left and yellow on the right. Stretch the orange down and the yellow up. Now do this for all the layers. Finally, on the last layer, after adding the gradient, position the yellow on the right and the orange on the left. Now create kind of line on the box to make it look nicer. Duplicate the first layer and change the color to red. All layers from this section will be marked red. Reduce the Y scale to 25%. Change the orange color to a darker tone. Stretch the yellow to the right and the brown to the left. Lower the opacity to 30%. Go to the layers of the opposite side of the cube. Duplicate it. Change layer color to red. Reduce the Y scale to 25%. And in the gradient, change the orange to brown. Stretch the brown to the left and the yellow to the right. And lower the opacity to 30%. Do the same for the other two base layers of the cube. Create a line in the same way. And that's it, the cube is complete. Now let's move on to create the cube opening animation. Move forward to about 2.5 seconds, select all the layer layers, and create the X rotation keyframes. Move back almost 2 seconds, and increase the X rotation of the layers until the sides close the cube. Make sure it closes properly. Select the keyframes, open the graph editor, and create a fast ease in. Let's see how it goes. It looks good, but we can make the opening look a bit nicer. Grab the keyframes of the start and the last layers and move them slightly backward. Then, grab only the last keyframes and move them forward. This makes the parts open one after another and it looks much better. Switch back to active camera, select all the layers and pre-compose them. Turn the comp into 3D, reduce the scale to 25%, move the cube down roughly here and create a position keyframe. Also create X, Y and Z rotation keyframes and increase the X and the Z by 6. Move to the start of the layer and move the cube to the top right corner of the comp. Rotate the cube slightly, just play around with the values, or you can copy mine. Select the keyframes, open the graph editor, and create a sharp is out. Since you pre-compose the cube, rotating it won't affect directly. You need to click here so the rotation applies to the cube. Move the last keyframe slightly forward, it should look like this. Now let's add some motion, and to create it smoother, add a new null, make it 3D, and pair the cube to it. Move the anchor point of the null to the center of the cube, move back slightly, and create Y rotation, scale, and position keyframes. Move forward, add the past 1.5 seconds, reduce the Z position to 3000, rotate the cube 2 and half terms, and scale down to 0%. Select the scale and position keyframes, go into the graph editor, and create a sharp ease out. Click the Y rotation, create a fast ease in, and move it forward slightly. Let's see. Add text box and type Amazon. Scale it up to 300%, and slightly reduce the X scale. Make the text 3D, and position it in the center of the screen. Now we'll separate the letters into individual layers. Like we did in the text bounce animation, duplicate the text to be used as a template. Then create separate layer for each letter, placing each letter above its template. When done, delete the template layer. Select all the letter layers and center the anchor points. Move to 1 second and 20 frames, create scale and position keyframes, right click and choose separate dimensions. And also create a Z rotation keyframe. Move back 20 frames, move the letter behind the cube, scale to 100% and add 180 degrees to the Z rotation. Lower the opacity to 0 degrees and create a keyframe. Move slightly forward and return the opacity to 100%. Go into the Y position graph, right click inside, and choose Edit Value Graph. Stretch the graph down for a smooth slightly curves motion. Add position, scale, and rotation bounds to the layer. This add this motion to the letters. Select the remaining letter layers, move forward 4 frames, create scale and position keyframes. Also here right click and choose separate dimensions, and create Z rotation keyframe like in the first letter. Move back 20 frames. Copy the keyframes for the first letter, and paste them onto the other letters. This way, they all start from the same point. Select the Y position of the letter layers, except the first, and start the graph as the same way as the first letter. Also, add a 4 frame offset between each layer to create a staggered motion. Finally, add bounds to the rotation, scale and position. Let's see. Wow, it's absolutely insane. Move 9 frames forward after the first keyframe of the first letter, trim the first letter layer, and on the trim part, add a white stroke with 10 pixels. Do the same for all the other letter layers, Trim 9 frames after the keyframe and add the white stroke to the first layer. This creates the effect of the line transformation into the letters. Select all the letter layers and pre-compose them. Change the pre-compose color to blue so it's easier to keep track. Make the layer 3D and move it down. Add a tint effect to the layer. Move to the moment the first letter exits and create a map white keyframe. Change the tint color to yellow. Move forward 2 frames and change it to green. Move another 2 frames and change it to cyan. Move another frame forward and change it to dark blue. Again, move one frame forward and change it to purple. Continue this color sequence, adjusting as you like. You can follow my keyframes and colors. When you reach the green color for the first time, around 2 seconds, move slightly forward, create an opacity keyframe and set it to 
move back slightly and raise the opacity back to 100%. Let's see. Okay, now duplicate the layer, and on the duplicate the layer, delete all the keyframes and the tint effect. Duplicate the layer again and move it down. Add a fine edge effect to the bottom layer and click invert. This makes the letters look like this. Change the layer mode to screen and restore the visibility of the other layers. Move the top layer forward by one frame and the bottom layer forward by two frames. This creates three different layers that together produce this effect. Lower the opacity of the bottom layer to 20%. On the color text layer, add the glow effect. Set the radius to 30. Duplicate the effect and set the duplicate radius to 85. Also add the glow effect to the top text layer, the normal layer, and set the radius to 250. And that's it. It looks amazing now. Duplicate the cube comp twice, move the bottom layer forward by 2 frames, and the top layer forward by 1 frame, just like the next layers. Now, copy the effect from the first text comp, and paste it onto the first cube comp. Finally, change the mode to screen. Copy the glow and the tint effect from the second text layer, move to the first keyframe of the colors, and paste them onto the second cube layer. Also, reduce the opacity of this layer to 30%, so it's not that strong. Finally, copy the glow from the top text layer, and paste it onto the top cube layer. Let's see. Mm, that looks very good. Add the Amazon logo image to the comp, scale it down and position it so it's exactly over the text. Using the pen tool with orange fill, trace the edge of the arrow following the template. Trace the body according to the template, make sure it's accurate. Finally, delete the orange logo layer. On one of the layers, right click and under layer style choose inner shadow. And again, right click and under layer style choose inner glow. In the inner glow settings, lower the opacity to 30% and in the inner glow set the size to 80 and the opacity to 50%. Copy both effects and paste them onto the second layer. Move the body layer below the edge layer and make the edge layer in yellow. Turn both layers into 3D. When all the letters are in place, create position and Z rotation keyframes for the edge layer. Move half second back, move the edge into place and rotate it 60 degrees. Select the position keyframes and in the middle use the pen tool to create a point. Move it a bit, then click on it again to create a motion that follows the base. This defines the base movement. Go to the position graph and merge the graph into one for smooth motion. For the Z rotation graph, create a heel sharp graph, go to the first keyframes, create a mask for the bottom of the body layer, create a mask path keyframe, and move the mask to the left so the logo is hidden. Move two frames forward, shift the mask in front of the edge, and repeat this every two frames, moving the mask behind the edge. This way, the body only appears behind the edge. And it looks like this. Go back to the first keyframe, cut the edge layer, and move the top part up. Go into the letters comp, copy the first keyframes for one of the letters, return to the main comp, move back a bit, and paste the keyframes onto the top cube layer. Open the Y position graph, and stretch it the same way we did with the letters. Move to the last keyframes, and reset the scale to 100%. Now let's create this kind of motion. Now create the same effect on the top layer that we did for the letters and the cube. Duplicate the top layer twice, move the top duplicate one frame forward, and the bottom duplicate two frames forward. Copy the fine edges effect, paste it onto the bottom duplicate layer, change the layer mode to screen, Go to the last opacity keyframe and set it to 30%. Copy the tint effect and both close, move to the first keyframe, and paste them onto the second edge layer of the icon. Finally, copy the glow from the top text layer, and paste it onto the duplicate edge layer, also onto the yellow cut layer. Go to the last opacity keyframe of the second layer, and set it to 30% too. That looks amazing. Stand on the first opacity keyframe of the second text layer, right click and add inner shadow to the layer. In the settings, lower the opacity to 0% and create a keyframe. Move to the last opacity keyframe and raise the inner shadow opacity to 30%. A little before the icon finishes its movement, go into the letters comp and on the Z layer, create a Y position keyframe. Move 3 frames forward and raise the letter slightly. Copy the previous keyframe, move 6 frames forward and paste it. Select the keyframes, open the graph and reset them into a normal shape so they have no motion. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, Share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next tutorials. Also drop a comment and let me know which animation you would like us to create in the next video. See you!